Hello. Welcome to Spinning and Weaving Week 2020 with Shack Spindle Company. I'm Stephanie, and I'm going to be leading the Weave Along. For the Weave Along this week, we are going to be making a pillow. And the pillow features five separate techniques each day and a bonus feature at the end to figure out how to put it together. If you haven't already, you can sign up for our Weave Along at shackspindle.com. I'm going to be weaving my pillow along with you on my 20 inch flip loom. I used an eight dent reed and warped it 13 and a half inches in the reed. So any of our floor, table looms, or rigid heddles with a weaving width of 15 inches or more will work just right. We're on day one and the first technique that we're going to be using is the clasped weft. And in order to do the clasped weft, you're gonna to wanna to pick two shuttles and wind them of different colors. I chose colors that were very similar, but you can choose uh, very different values if you want a higher impact of the patterning that we're going to be creating. Most of the pillow is woven in worsted weight yarn. In this case, on the clasped weft, we're going to be doubling the weft every pass that we make. So you want a yarn that's about half the weight. I chose Brown Sheep Company Sport Weight Nature Spun. You can use any yarn that you like. One of the things that's important is you choose two that are very similar in weight. Great. You ready to get going? Let's weave along. In order to do this, I used our Rocky Mountain Meadow colorway from Shack Spindle Company dyed by Sweet Georgia Yarn. It's in an 80% wool and 20% silk. I warped it up at eight ends per inch in the reed for a total of 13 and a half inches. Now when I warp a loom like this, I use a direct peg warping technique because I find that it's much faster. One of the questions that I often get asked is that I have two warps coming through each of the slots in the heddles. And people ask if it's important if you pick up the top or the bottom thread. Because of the changes in color in this colorway, I just paid attention to the next two or three slots ahead to try and line up some of the colors. As you can see, I lined up a little bit of the green, lined up a little bit of the blue. I'm gonna get started weaving. And I'm not going to add hem stitching. So because I'm going to be sewing the end on my sewing machine. So to get started, I'm going to choose the yarn that I have a little bit more of on my shuttle. And I'm just gonna show you how I spread my warp. There are many different ways that weavers do this. And I don't think there is a right or wrong way there might be a better way for the particular project that you're working on. So for this project, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use. I'm going to lift the heddle from neutral into the up position. Grasping my shuttle, I'm going to pass the shuttle through and leave a tail that's about six inches long. Now, this is one of the key parts. I'm going to move the heddle into the down position. And if you'll notice, I did not beat the yarn. So I'm going to move the weft and shuttle back through and tidy my edge here at the end. Then one of the other things that I really like to do is I like to go around that first thread. So I'm going to change the heddle back to the up position. If you'll notice again, I did not beat the weft. This is one of the techniques for spreading when you don't have uh, huge spaces in between. And I like to alleviate that in general by tying small bundles, not bigger than about an inch. So I'm gonna sh set my shuttle down now. And now is when I'm going to beat. And you'll notice that I have a very nice spread out warp. That's just one of my tricks for today. 
The next thing that we're going to do is weave about a half an inch of a header. Now we're going to get started with the clasped weft. One of the things about a clasped weft is that we are going to be doubling each of these wefts in the warp. So what that means is you want to pick something for your weft yarn that's about half the weight of the other yarns that you're going to be using in the wefts. So I chose two colors that are very similar. This won't give me a dramatic effect, but I think it will still be very pleasing. So I am in an up shed now, which is the opposite shed of the last one that I was in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my shuttle from the right. Now I am right-handed, so I do have a little bit of a dominant technique in this. What you're going to do is you're going to catch that yarn from your other shuttle. And do you see how they're looped here? We're going to bring the shuttle that came from the right to the left back in, and we're in the same shed as when we passed the shuttle over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this other color as far across as I like. And I'm leaving a little bit of a bubble. I want to have nice selvages. And you can tell, well, so what happens with this end? Right now this end is just hanging loops. And that's fine. Because we're going to beat and go into the down shed. Now, this is where I like to just take this little end, pop it under a couple of the up warps, and we'll leave it there until after it's washed and then trimmed. So we're coming in again from the right, over to the left. I'm going to not pay attention to that little end. I'm going to loop the shuttle around so that we have these two crossed over, bringing it through that open shed again. And now you get to decide how far you want that dark thread to come over again. You can do it halfway, you can do it a little bit. Um, you'll notice from the pillow that I had in my sample that um, I chose to make sort of a triangular pattern. It's really up to you. One thing is that if you choose to use this technique over a large area, one of the things that's very neat is that you can actually start to get curves, which whether you've been weaving for a long time or not weaving for very long, you might have noticed that curves in weaving don't happen very often. So this is a great technique. I'm going to keep weaving and check back with you at the end of the section. So here we are having completed our three and a half inches of weaving. I ended in an up shed. And I just wanted to show you how I finish 
putting my ends in. So we finished in an up shed. So this is the, the last one that we worked. I find the outermost selvage yarn. And in this case, I'm, it's up. So I'm going to go over it. I'm going to go back into the shed about an inch and let that hang down. Now you can tell from this other side that my last thread is a down thread. So I'm going to go under it in about an inch and pull that thread out. I like this finishing technique because you're almost always finishing exactly on the same color of yarn on either side and it becomes nearly invisible. So please join us tomorrow for the technique number two, loops.